the worst. If you have no idea what any of that means, you're not alone. There are dozens of things we see and use every day, but have never actually heard what their official names are. Well, get ready, because you're about to learn them all! Now, before you upgrade your vocab, don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on post notifications to join us on the bright side. And here we go! A tartle is used to describe that moment of hesitation before speaking because hmm, you can't remember someone's name. That can also be classified as a really awkward moment, but that's another story. The column-like support beams you see under the handrail on a staircase are called balusters. You might also find them supporting pieces of furniture as well as on balconies and porches. Ever heard of a vagitus? No, it's not a body part. This word literally means crying fetus. It refers to the shrieking cry that newborns make. Earplugs are recommended. Speaking of ears, don't you hate having an earworm? You know, a song that gets stuck in your head? It's especially annoying when you don't even like the song. Wait, you thought I was talking about a worm that invades your ear? Ew, no. That little soft patch of indented skin between your top lip and your nose is your philtrum. Mustaches love to grow here. Don't you love that Jimi Hendrix song? How does it go? Excuse me while I kiss this guy? Huh? It's kiss the sky. Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah, I've just had a case of mondegreen. Totally misunderstood those lyrics. You wear belts, right? Well, that little loop on the buckle that helps keep the end of it in place is known as a keeper. Yep, it's as simple as that. Now, take a look at your nails. See those curved white tips on the ends of them? That section of your nail is called a lunule. And all you nail biters out there, stop eating your unules. If you have a gizmo or gadget that really serves no purpose, like fidget spinners, what's the point of those anyways? They're referred to as gubbins. Sometimes silly people are called gubbins too. Does that mean they serve no purpose? Hmm. Ah, the pearlicue. You know that little patch of webbed skin between your thumb and pointed finger? It really sticks out when you make an L with your index finger and thumb. Hey, don't put it on your forehead. That's mean. Here's one that we all get annoyed with. You know those stringy pieces that get in the way while you're enjoying a perfectly yummy banana? Those are called phloem bundles, and they actually serve as a way to deliver nutrients to the fruit while it's still growing. When you've been sitting still for a while or just woke up, you stretch and yawn, causing your muscles to tense up. This is known as pandiculation. Either that or you're pointing to a panda. Doctors are notorious for using griffinage, otherwise known as writing that's practically impossible to read. Is there a cure for griffinage? Well, practice your handwriting. Bumbershoot is just a fancy and utterly hilarious word for an umbrella. It comes from a combination of umbrella and parachute. You probably won't hear it used nowadays, since this is a pretty old-fashioned American slang. The ferrule is that little metal piece you see on the end of your pencil just below the eraser. Its purpose is to hold the eraser to the wood. Simple and effective. When you find out company is coming and you frantically clean your house like a crazy person for an hour, this is called scurry funch. Do you scurry funge? Let me know down in the comments. And you know those strips of wood that separate sections of a glass window into little squares? Those are called muntins. Without them, windows would be made of one glass pane. While some windows do consist of one big piece of glass, muntins help bring design to the window. Plus, if the glass isn't super strong, these separate pieces make the window more durable. Now, can you rub your belly and pat your pate at the same time? Well, aren't you talented? The pate is the tippy top of your head, in case you didn't get that. The aglet is that little metal or sometimes plastic piece that holds the tips of shoelaces or drawstrings on a jacket from fraying. And without the aglet, good luck getting your shoestring through the eyelets. You wear an arm sigh almost every single day. Two, to be exact. It's the armhole in your clothing. 
Don't feel bad if you didn't know this. The term is used almost exclusively by tailors and clothing designers. You use a nurdle every morning and evening. It's the little dab of toothpaste you squeeze onto your toothbrush. You do brush your teeth every day, don't you? You probably know it as a hashtag button or even the pound key on your phone. But this symbol is actually called an octothorpe. The button can be used to reach people's extension lines or as a symbol to press when communicating with an automated system. Now, it's been four hours since you've eaten, and you start hearing those all-too-familiar growls coming from your stomach. Those tummy grumbles are also known as borgerigum. They happen thanks to digestive juices and gases moving around inside our digestive system. Once you get some food in there, the noise isn't as loud. Ever turn your computer on and off again because the screen froze? Not only is this super annoying, but it also has a name. The action of turning something off and on again is known as power cycling. Next time you get a chance, take a look at the bottom of a bottle of wine. You'll notice that it's indented. This large indentation is referred to as the punt, and it serves to provide structural integrity. Do you know what nibbling means? No, this isn't referring to what you do alone quietly in the kitchen at 2 a.m. A nibbling is actually a gender-neutral way of referring to a niece or nephew. Kind of like sibling for brothers and sisters. After a particularly grueling workout, you may grab a cold sports drink or water and chug it down somewhat dramatically in an attempt to quench your thirst. The verb for this is to zerts. Ever order a cold beer with that perfect bit of foam on top? That foam actually has a name, barm. It occurs naturally thanks to the way beer comes out of the tap. You probably think you'd never find a use for an oyster pail. But the fact is, you see them all the time. They're those square white boxes that Chinese takeout comes in. Fun fact, did you know you can unfold them to create disposable plates? Pretty cool, huh? Next time you head to the coffee shop, don't forget to grab a zarf. No, not scarf. Zarf. This is the name of the cardboard sleeve that keeps the heat of the cup from hurting your hand. Have you ever noticed that after it rains for the first time in a while, there's that certain smell in the air? That's called petrichor. Natural oils from plants and chemical compounds in the soil mesh together and create that special aroma. Ah, lovely. Ever heard of a carrot? Not carrot, carrot. It looks like a little upside-down V. This is the symbol you use to insert a left-out word or phrase into a sentence. It can also be found in mathematical equations and probably on your keyboard right now. And do you always remember to add your tittles? You know, the little dots over the letters like I and J? <laughs> it's okay if you can't stop giggling. Some questions are also exclamations, like, what were you thinking? Well, you can always put both a question mark and an exclamation point, right? Get this. Back in the 60s, a punctuation mark that looked like this was used to express the same idea. Known as an interrobang, it didn't become too popular and stopped being used as time went on. You know those strong words you shout when you stub your toe or accidentally drop a plate of food? When written down, they look like this. You've likely seen this in comic books or cartoons. That combo of symbols is referred to as a Grawlix. You know it as the division sign in math, but that's just its nickname. Call it what it is, an obelus. Ever wonder what the infinity symbol that looks like a sideways 8 is called? It's a lemniscuit. So, there you go! Well, Brightsiders, how did you like that? If you're looking for a reason to impress your friends, try learning one or two of these obscure words a day so that you can implement them into your everyday vocabulary. People will think you're a genius or really weird. Yeah, it can go either way, honestly. How many of these words did you know already? Tell us down in the comments! Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life!